Coming to you from Investor Town Hall's headquarters in sunny San Diego, I'm Daniel Wong. On today's program, we have Pressure Biosciences CEO Richard Schumacher talking about the shipments of the newest Barrow Cycler, a proprietary pressure cycling technology, and the important role it will play in the White House Cancer Moonshot, Moonshot Initiative. Stay right there. We're talking about what investors need to know and how these recent shipments are a positive indicator of good things to come. PBIO CEO Richard Schumacher is back on the program with some exciting news for investors. Rick, thanks for taking the time to talk with us again. Appreciate being on, and I'm coming from sunny Boston. <laughs> Rick, last time we had you on the show, you had just unveiled the Barrow Cycler 2320 Extreme, and now you just recently announced the first five shipments globally. Tell us what this means for, about, for pressure dryer sciences. Yes, uh, amazing things have happened since we last spoke, not just uh, not very long ago. Uh, we announced the uh, manufacture and release of the first five instruments of our new, uh, what I call 21st century next generation instrument. This is an instrument, as you know, that uses pulses of pressure to, bro to break open samples. So it's a, it's a whole new way of breaking open samples for scientists to get to them. We were able to generate uh, five instruments in our manufacturing uh, contract manufacturer, five instruments they were able to make by June 30th. And we shipped those five instruments uh, all pretty much near the end of uh, the end of June. Three of them went to Children's Medical Research Institute in Sydney, Australia. One went to an Ivy League research center, and one went to our distributor in China, who thinks that this is a, a very good instrument for the Chinese market. So the exciting thing is that the Children's Medical Research Institute is a major cancer research institute in Australia. And they've decided to use our system, pulses of pressure in the barocycler, to break open their samples. They have, Dan, they have 70,000 tumor samples that they're going to study over seven years. And they're going to buy 70 to 80 to 90,000 consumables. Each consumable is a, like a test tube that can withstand the pressure, and each sample, each of the 70,000 samples needs to have its own test tube. And this is an exciting thing for us because we are part of a, a very important research center in Australia that we think is going to be generating some very, very significant data on these samples over the next few years. And so, Rick, when we talk revenue, just for, for everyone listening here, when we have the, the Barocycler, you have the instrument and then the consumables in front of that, and that's what you sell after you sell the instrument, correct? Yes, we sell the, we're really pushing the sales of the instrument. As you know, we're a small company, and uh, we have a new uh, next generation instrument that's really something that is uh, using pulses of pressure, that is something that really hasn't been done before in the research center. And we're going to pressures that go up to 60, 70, 80, even 90,000 pounds per square inch, very safely and exquisitely controllable. And what we do is we sell the instrument, and then for each instrument, they need to, the customer needs to use our consumable products, our test tubes, our reaction tubes. And so the selling of the instrument is just the first step. That's the step that says, hey, the, the customer is saying, I believe that I can break open samples and get more information and maybe make discoveries easier, faster, uh, using pulses of pressure to break open the samples and get out the proteins, the DNA, the RNA, all the good stuff that scientists around the world need to study. But in order to do that, they not only need to buy our instrument, but they need to buy our consumables. And our consumables cost about one to two dollars a piece. So if somebody's going to run seventy thousand, they're going to pay a hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars over a course of time to run their samples. And that's what's exciting is that it's it's the old razor razor blade approach. We get a very good margin on our instruments, about sixty five percent gross margin, and we follow it. Uh, with a stream of consumables that can last months or years that also contain a margin of about 65 to 70 percent. Those are great margins, Rick. I mean, obviously, revenue now is starting to really um, see that that potential revenue is going to be coming in, and that definitely builds shareholder value there. You know, you've got over 175 customers you, you were mentioning. Uh, obviously, the Australia bought three instruments right off the bat. Or, or do you see some of these other customers buying some more of these as well? Well, we see, we see our revenue growing from the instruments uh, two ways. One is new customers. I mean, there are about 80,000 laboratories around the world, 80,000, Dan, 
that use some mechanism to break open samples. These samples are viruses and bacteria and cancer cells and normal cells. They're coming from plants, animals, humans, and microbes. They need some mechanism to break it open, like a nutcracker to break open the nut to get the nut out of the inside. You have to break open the cell to get all the good stuff out. And so we have a, a potential base of customers that's in the tens and tens of thousands. And right now, as you said, we have about 175 customers. So the first step is we need to go out and find new customers. And as a small company with a half a salesperson, I think we've done incredibly well on a, uh, on a new technology that's just being started to be accepted. The other way is to go back to our existing customer base of 175 customers. They have Some of them have machines that are three, four, and five years old. These are good machines, but what we've just released is a much better machine. It can go to higher pressures. It can do more in the pressure cycling. It is more robust, and it can run more samples at the same time. So we're very excited about our prospects in the future to both the, the enormous number of potential new customers and going back to existing customers and having them upgrade with our new instrument. That's very exciting, Rick. I know everyone wants to know, you know, what about the revenue? What about the revenue? So it definitely seems that that's starting to, you know, pick up for you there. And, you know, congratulations on on the progress there. Um, One thing you talked about that was exciting was the cancer moonshot. And, And for people who don't know what that is, could you maybe explain a little bit of that for us too? Well, on January 12th at the State of the Union, Professor Obama um, talked about what he called the cancer moonshot. He wanted to accelerate cancer research. He wanted to do in the next three to five years what would normally take 10. He talked about putting $300 million in 2016 and $700 million in 2017, a billion dollar shot in the arm. He put Vice President Joe Biden in charge. On July 16th, the White House put out an announcement and they said uh, Vice President Biden is in Australia and he's talking to representatives from four major cancer institutes in Australia. And he's named, he named these four institutes as official collaborators to our National Cancer Institute under the billion dollar initiative of the Cancer Moonshot. Guess what, Dan? One of those four was the Children's Medical Research Institute, which is the group that bought our first three instruments, our first new instruments. We've been there twice, once before and once after. We have a lot of uh, expectations coming from the work they're doing, the fantastic work that they're going to be doing, and they're going to be using our system to break apart 70,000 or more samples from tumor samples from different types of cancer from patients all over the world. So it's very exciting that our instrument is immediately, from the time it came off the block and got sold, it's immediately going to be used in the president's cancer moonshot initiative, this $1 billion initiative. So there will be many, many, many more cancer centers throughout the world, certainly throughout the U.S., that are going to be part of this initiative. And we're hoping and expecting that the Children's Medical Research Institute is just the first of many that will be using our system as part of the initiative. That's extremely exciting, you know, Rick, obviously, with all the, the progress, you know, going on there. I mean, how exciting would it be if, if your instrument was part of the, the cure for cancer? And I think people talk about those things. If you can help find cures for these, you're, you're doing, you know, greater good for the, uh, for the rest of the world here. So, I mean, it's got to feel good, and we definitely your passion comes through there. Um, you know, well, what it, it is exciting, Dan, because you're right. Our system is going to be used in a very worthwhile cause, and it's exciting to know that you're supplying an instrument that the customer believes can go further and do more than what's out there now in their quest to try to find a cure for a disease, and in this case, a cure for cancer. So yes, it's exciting for us, and and I think it's exciting for our shareholders, because our shareholders are investing in a company that is doing something, doing good. It's it's a good process. It's a it's a good it's a feel good uh, investment. So we're excited. We have a number of my investors who call and say, "I'm in because I want to make money, but I also want to make money while we're doing something good for mankind." So it's it's exciting for us as a company. I love it, and you have a very loyal shareholder base. I've I've had the pleasure of speaking with some of them as well, and um, you know definitely believe in you. Definitely believe in the company and the product. So I mean that that definitely uh, speaks volumes for you there. Um, you know, on, on that note here, just to kind of end end with this is, um, you know, how is the company always continuing to build shareholder value? And you've already touched on some of those things, but I, I guess in, in your words, you know, what is the company's initiative on that? Well, we set up a number of goals for 2016, 
and we've met more than half of the goals already in, in the in the first half of the year. The first thing we want to do was pay back all of the debt uh, uh, of this very difficult debt that we had to take on to grow the company. And we've done that. We announced earlier this year that we've paid off $3 million in debt. The second thing we wanted to do was align ourselves with a much bigger company, a company that has a much bigger worldwide sales force. And we've done that. And, and, and there's been an announcement that we have a co-marketing deal with Syax. Syax is the number one company in the world that sells an instrument called a mass spectrometer, which is the gold standard for reading proteins. So our system sits in front of theirs. Our system costs about $50,000. Their system costs anywhere from 300 to a million dollars. And together it makes one plus one equal three. And this is the, the two systems that will be used by the Cancer Research Center, Children's Medical Research Center in Australia. So that's the second thing that we did. The third thing is we knew that we had to improve our instrument because things have happened. This is technology that is moving. And we wanted to take some of the uh, new technology and put it into our system. We've done that. I'm very excited that on top of everything else, we were able to design, develop, manufacture, and release the first five of our instruments uh, of this new next generation instrument. So now we've got to look at the second half of the year. What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at continued increase in revenue. We believe that our revenue will continue to increase, even though we're still the same nine people that we had four years ago and three years ago. And even though we've gone from 20 customers to 175, 40 instruments in the field, almost 300, even though we have five instruments now and not one, we have been able to increase revenue from a couple hundred thousand dollars a quarter to the first quarter of this year, 500000 and we've given guidance to expect continued increase over the previous quarter for the rest of this year. I think most importantly, and all of that is bringing value to our shareholders, but I think the thing that will perhaps bring a lot more uh, value is the fact that we've started the process of uplisting the company. We're an OTC QB company. We treat the company as if it's NASDAQ, and we started the process of uplisting the company back to the NASDAQ stock exchange, which means instead of you know, what I'm told, three out of every 100 brokers that look and love the story that can actually buy it, you're looking at basically all the brokers that you talk to. Stock brokers are able to buy the company, the company stock. So we're excited about that. That process is ongoing. It may happen by the end of the year. It may not, but it's going to happen very shortly. Uh, we're certainly on that uh, process of getting it uplisted. Tremendous, Rick. You've come a long way. Congratulations on all that, and you really are delivering. Hope to see you on the NASDAQ here soon. Rick, we're out of time for now, but we definitely want to have you back on again. We'd like to thank our guest, Pressure Biosciences CEO, Rick Schumacher, for being on the show. Rick, thanks again so much. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Catch more videos and interviews on InvestorTownal.com in the webcast section, and tune in next time and get your voice heard. Stay tuned for the next interviews here on InvestorTownHall.com. Also, make sure to join a stock board to start the discussion and get your voice heard. Investor Town Hall connects investors and companies building trust and transparency in both public and private companies. This is your chance to get your voice heard on our platform and share information with investors just like you. From equity crowdfunding, Regulation A+, to emerging growth companies, we are on the front lines in capital formation and entrepreneurship. Find out how the average Joe can get skin in the game. We put leading industry professionals front and center, giving you access to years of knowledge and expertise. Join the conversation on InvestorTownHall.com and sign up for your free account today.